Hello and welcome to this new episode of Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. I'm your host Manoj Agarwal, and today we have a very special guest, Kara Golden. So Kara is the founder and CEO of Hint Inc., which is best known for its award-winning Hint Water. Kara is skilled in entrepreneurship, brand management, sales, e-commerce, marketing, leadership, and public speaking. Kara has been involved in sales department for leading companies like CNN and Time Magazine. Kara has been named one of the InStyle's Badass 50, Fast Company's Most Creative People in Business, Fortune's Most Powerful Women Entrepreneurs, Fortune's Most Innovative Women in Food and Drink, and EY Entrepreneur of the Year for Northern California. The Huffington Post listed Kara as one of the six disruptors in business alongside, listen to this, Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg. Kara has successfully navigated the world of large companies and startups in many industries, including media, tech, and consumer products. In addition, she understands retail and direct-to-consumer market as well. She's an active speaker and writer and hosts the podcast, The Kara Golden Show, where she interviews founders, entrepreneurs, and other disruptors across various industries. Kara's first book, Undaunted, Overcoming Doubts and Doubters, uh, published by Harper Leadership, was released in October 2020 and is now... Uh, uh, WSJ and Amazon bestseller. So glad to have you, Kara, with us. Thank you. Very excited to be here. Awesome. So you've had a very successful career, um, and uh, you know you've done some amazing things. Uh, help us. Uh, how did it all come about? Maybe walk us down the memory lane. How did it all, uh, all get started? I'm sure uh, you had your shares of ups and downs, but let's start at the beginning, and then we'll unfold the story as we go. Sure. Well, I uh, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, so I, I started my career actually in New York City in media, and I was at a uh, magazine called Time Magazine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I actually write about it in my book that I uh, I wanted to work for Fortune Magazine, but they wouldn't hire me. So that was uh -huh. probably my first big hit where, uh -huh. where I thought, why won't they hire me? I mean, yeah. I've... I've uh, God, I'm a great writer. I, at yeah. least I thought I was at age 21. And, and yeah. I was very interested in finance and I would love to work for them, but uh, they weren't hiring people unless you had experience. Yeah. So I ended up getting a role at Time Magazine, not in editorial, but actually in circulation, which uh, as I look at today and many others look at as kind of the really the backbone to direct to consumer businesses and mm -hmm. and subscriptions and that was the that was really like where i was trained in in sort of that first role i w i left time after a few years was recruited out to a late stage startup called cnn Oh, and, wow. <laughs> and I was there at a time when, you know, Ted Turner was still running around the office. Yeah, yeah. He was bouncing between Atlanta and New York. And, you know, he was definitely my first kind of uh, experience with a visionary entrepreneur, that there were mm -hmm. plenty of people who thought that he wouldn't be able to do what he was setting out to do, that yeah, he yeah. wanted 24 hour news. He wanted it across the world. And, you know, he was lucky at this point to have it in 50 percent of the households because yeah, most yeah, yeah. people didn't have cable. So watching somebody who I believed in, but I also thought, there's a chance that it's not really going to play yeah, out the yeah, way that he wants it yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. I watched him build the brand, put stakes in the gr ground, and he never floundered. I mean, mm -hmm. he was always very consistent about his messaging and what he believed. And, you know, it was such a pleasure to even see him and and hear him talk in the kitchen because yeah. you think like he is a little crazy but he definitely <laughs> he believes and yeah. and I believe cuz he believes I got to spend yeah. more time with this person anyway it was when the gulf war uh yeah. rolled around I and mean, that that was really you know when Iraq learned that they were being bombed frankly yeah. that that's yeah. they turned on CNN and that yeah. was really the the hockey stick for CNN mm -hmm. and and I was there during that time. So I was there for a few more years and then I decided to move to Silicon Valley yeah. and uh, was engaged. My husband was in uh, had just graduated from law school and wanted to do technology law. So right. we moved out to Silicon Valley. The only person that I thought of 
when I thought about Silicon Valley was Steve Jobs. And I mm -hmm. had had in college uh, a computer, um, one of the first Macintosh computers. Yeah. And I was fascinated by how small it was, a little bigger than they are today, yeah. but also just that it was, it was aesthetically interesting. It was whoever designed this machine, it was simpler than the rest of the computers out there. So mm -hmm. I thought, how do I get a job at Apple? Yeah. And I couldn't figure that out. But instead, in my research, I saw that there was this little company that was doing CD-ROM shopping uh -huh. that had spun out of Apple that was halfway between Silicon Valley and San Francisco, where I was living. Uh -huh. So I picked up the phone and cold called one of the people that was quoted in this Wall Street Journal article. And I said, I, I think I probably hoped it was going to be Steve Jobs on, on the phone, <laughs> yeah. but it wasn't. And mm. instead I said, hey, I'm, I'm really interested. I, I know that there's this whole idea of broadband and, you know, dial-up services are out there. I, I And, you know, more than anything, I love the idea that graphics could be put onto a disc yeah. And then the and then basically you're telling consumers to insert it into the machine, which was yeah. a little known Steve Jobs idea. Uh, and I thought, I get it. I'd love to just grab coffee with you. I'm not really looking for a job, but yeah, it'd be great to do that. So I go for for coffee and suddenly I have a job offer. And my job yeah. offer was, you know, to go out to catalogers and retailers. And I remember thinking what in the world am I going to do mm -hmm. while I'm here? Right. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's crazy. I, I don't have any experience in tech or the technology. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. an engineer, but what the heck? I mean, yeah. what's the worst that could happen? They'll fire <laughs> yeah, yeah. me yeah, and yeah. see what happens. So mm -hmm. instead I took on this role and it was a business development sales role. And my job was to cold call J crew and, all the gap and yeah, LL Bean yeah. and all kinds of retailers and help really build out this kind of online mall. Mm -hmm. Well, one of our investors, America online invested in to market was My the name favorite. of the company yeah, yeah, yeah. alongside Apple. And then they acquired us when we needed more money. And yeah, yeah. part of the acquisition was to build out exactly what we had done on the CD-ROM on America Online. And they invited right. me okay. to come and run their partnerships, the retail right. partnerships yeah, for yeah. this online. So there was a small period of time where I was running the disc as well as the online partnerships. Yeah, and yeah. the idea was that we could offer retailers this two different platforms while broadband was catching up and all the different technology was catching up. I think more than anything, what I learned during that time was watching people like Ted Turner, watching people either working directly or indirectly for people like Steve Jobs, then Steve Case, incredible entrepreneurs who there was a chance none of this was going to happen. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, and they were having fun and they were learning along the way and they made mistakes and they made failures. And I loved all of those experiences because I thought, you know, it's it's risky maybe to some, but I'm yeah. enjoying it. Every yeah. day we're building, we're building, and we're continuing to go on. Well, at the end of seven years at America Online, that's when it was a billion dollars in revenue. Mm -hmm. um, many stories from working re with retailers, including working with Jeff Bezos, where mm -hmm. I was helping build a bookshelf up in Seattle with him because he wouldn't be <laughs> with me unless unless I he uh, unless I took the time to uh, his time basically uh -huh. at 530 in the afternoon to do that. So many amazing stories along the way. Mm -hmm. But basically it was a billion dollars in revenue after seven years. And I decided to take a little time off. And it was at that moment when I didn't plan on launching my own company or and certainly not launching a beverage company. I really mm. thought that I was probably going to do something else in tech. But it was when I looked at my own life and what I really cared about and really kind of the the puzzle that I was trying to solve in my own life around my own health. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to lose weight. I was trying to uh, clear up my skin that had developed terrible acne and mm -hmm. my energy levels. And I thought, I never used to be like this. Why am I like this now? Mm -hmm. And when I started looking at everything that I was eating 
and drinking, I finally stumbled upon my diet soda, my diet mm. Coke in particular. And I thought if I can just do this little test to swap it out for plain water, maybe it will make a difference. And it made a huge difference. In two mm -hmm. and a half weeks, I not only got my energy back and cleared up my skin, but I lost 24 pounds. Wow. In two and a half weeks. Holy cow. Just by getting off of diet sweeteners. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say on this, and then I'll stop talking for everybody, but the last thing I'll say is that the idea of stumbling onto something that I didn't really expect to stumble on, my curiosity was piqued. And I thought, why is it just by giving up diet sweeteners, am I able to get healthy when there's a whole industry out there that has been telling me that if I drink diet yeah. and, and low fat and vitamin and all the rest, that I'm going to be healthier. Isn't that mm. the opposite of what really happens? And so I became really interested in, mm. in this. The only problem was that plain water for me was boring. It was something, it was a chore to drink yeah, it. So yeah. I started slicing up fruit and throwing it in the water. I see, I see. And then I would share with people about this, what I had created, because mm -hmm. people were noticing that I had lost this weight, my skin yeah, had cleared yeah. up, and I would share my story. And they'd say, that's incredible. Can you make some for me? Yeah, I'd yeah. Say, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then I thought, you know, while I'm taking a hiatus from tech, Maybe yeah. I'll maybe I'll go get a product on the shelf at Whole Foods. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. how hard could it be? Uh -huh, I never uh -huh. thought about taking on the soda industry, taking yeah. on big sugar, uh, you know, all the things that I'm known for today. I I, I never really thought about that. Instead, I yeah. just thought I'm going to try. I'm going to go get it on the shelf, and it kind of be a kick yeah. if it actually worked. If someone yeah. else bought it, but yeah. more importantly, if I was helping people. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I really thought about it. It would make me feel good to know that I was helping people with something that is as important as health. And I think having my own experience, having my own, you know, challenges, that that was the thing that I was most passionate about. And it's a lot of what I talk about in the book as well, mm. that, that, while I thought it would work against me to actually come from tech and not having been in the beverage industry, what I realized was actually a lot of the skills that I had developed combined with my own passion and my own curiosity and interest in, in health and, and the, the change was exactly what was needed to go in and disrupt an industry. Yeah, and I yeah. not only was developing a new product, but also developed an entirely new category um, for in the beverage industry, which hadn't been developed called unsweetened flavored water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that is the story. That's awesome. That's great. So, I mean, to summarize it, it seems like, you know, a few things that jumped out uh, uh, for me in this story is, first of all, your willingness to go with the flow, you know, when, when you apply that Fortune magazine and and you got in uh, a CNN and not not in writing in, in another department, but just how you basically capitalized on that, learn from that. And then your curiosity, as you said, like, you know, just um, trying to absorb wherever you're going and, and sort of learning from those experiences and putting them in your uh, in your journey. And uh, lastly, you know, uh, the the more people, the more successful entrepreneurs I talk about, uh, talk to in my own journey, I find that so same common thread. Like there is something that happens in their life, which sort of gives them the passion to keep mm -hmm. pushing forward. Because as you said, um, it's not easy at all. I mean, you know, once you reach a certain stage, people just look at the tip of the iceberg, but they, they fail to see the, the, all the struggles and the, and the failures behind the scenes. But if that passion was not fueling it, you know, it, it's very easy to give up, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it, it's a, I, I describe the journey of an entrepreneur like this. And I know you, you're a serial entrepreneur. So let me see if this resonates with you. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if you don't enjoy doing puzzles, yeah, yeah, yeah. then 
you won't really love being an entrepreneur. Exactly. Maybe you don't get a chance to do puzzles very often, but it's it it is a good gauge for me yeah. whether or not you allow yourself to do and I should say a new puzzle that yeah, you, yeah. that you've never done and by the way no one's given you the picture. That's you have right. No idea yeah. what's in front of you, but you yeah. think I'm going to go try. Yeah. And then along the way in your journey somebody walks up and they take a handful of the puzzle pieces and you're like, wait, what, where are you going? It's not that it isn't, <laughs> you, you can't do that. I'm right yeah. in the middle of this. Everything's yeah. going great. Everything's yeah. wonderful. You know, I'm not going to be able to finish the puzzle if you don't give them back, but they never do. And yeah. they just walk away. Mm -hmm. And then you just say, okay. And then you just keep trying and thinking, okay, what else can I do along okay. the way okay. to finish this puzzle? Then you find out that those puzzle pieces, you didn't even need them, yeah. right? They left. You were very upset about them, but you kept going and you kept figuring it out. And then along the way, you find out that those puzzle pieces end up coming back. And then you're yeah. like, awesome. They ended up coming back because I was able to finish the rest of the puzzle. That's now right, they're coming back. Right. Now I see the full picture. Yeah. And so things like that, I think, are the mindset, no matter what industry you're in. Mm -hmm. And if you need the picture to solve a puzzle, if, if you can't handle the fact that someone is going to come in and take things from you and you just continue to figure out how to move on, then being an entrepreneur isn't for you. And part of the reason why I wrote my book as well was really to, you know, share this idea with people. I, I think that the the glamour of being an entrepreneur is often overstated. Mm -hmm. I always say to people, there's way easier ways to make money. I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> and there's, you know, you can't, it's not a nine to five job. No. It's uh, you know, when uh even as you're building along the way, if if you don't really understand every single role in this company uh that you're working in that you've built, then you know, somebody can leave and, and you have to, to you have to be able to do that job, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what happens absolutely. along the way. Absolutely. And you have to make payroll, you have to, there's a lot of things that you have to be able to do along the way. And mm -hmm. I think that the, the idea of, I guess my background in working for other entrepreneurs, I never really, I, you get a renewed interest and mm. appreciation for other entrepreneurs when you set out to yeah. go and do it. Yeah. I I also tell people, you know, a, of there's a chance always in an entrepreneur's head that you could fail. There's yeah. always that doubt. But the the worst thing they can do is surround themselves with doubters yeah. that are going to feed into that. Because the the most important thing for an entrepreneur to be able to do is to knock down the walls in front of them, figure out how to go around the wall, mm -hmm. constantly innovating in order to get through something. Yeah. I, a lot of people talk about hustle and about never stopping. I think it's okay actually to slow down sometimes to stop and think you talked about, you know, having a situation in front of you where you don't exactly know what to do. I mean, I think that the, the the best entrepreneurs are able to kind of look at what's in front of them and the fork in the road and make decisions, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also know that they can go one way and they're hopeful that that way is going to work, but they also know that they can't make the same mistake twice. So yeah. they're they're going to they're going to turn around and maybe go the other way even yeah. if it'll take them a little bit longer to assess the situation. And and that is the most important thing I think in in not only, you know, building a new company and being an entrepreneur but also building something totally new like a new category. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean so many things resonate uh, in that what you said like uh, it, it, the puzzle piece is 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 the greatest example and right. and and the I and the funny thing is it's not even a Rubik's cube. It's like a multi-dimensional puzzle which changes every day. I mean the economy, okay. the 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 people's perceptions, the preferences changes every so you it's it's not like you solve the puzzle one day and it's like okay I'm, I'm done now. 
uh, it just keeps going and going and going. And and the and the way you said it, like uh, the fork in the road, sometimes you really have to test it. And 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 you need people who are flexible enough to go along with that because mm -hmm. uh, because people who are not flexible enough, it will drive them nuts because every day you tell them something, oh, hey, we're going to try this. And they're like, hey, wh what happened to that? Y yesterday we were talking about that. Like, no, no, no. Okay, forget about that. Let's try this. So it's a it's a very um, a dynamic environment like that. And I think um, the way I look at it is uh, it's almost like a discovery uh, of yourself, you know, a mm -hmm. self-discovery in the sense, okay, what are you made of? What, what are you capable of, right? Absolutely. And I even, you know, think too that these challenges along the way and these failures along the way you know they they build resilience right mm -hmm. they build and and it's important to look back on those times and i still have those times today when you know i've had many challenging moments but i'll have challenges that maybe i didn't expect the pandemic for example yeah, yeah, yeah. when we're an fda regulated company mm. that is um that we've always known we were an essential product, but there yeah. are regulations in the U S around being an essential product and your responsibility mm -hmm. to actually stock shelves and, mm -hmm. you know, have enough supplies for stores, yeah. for consumers yeah. to be able to access. And so people said to me, you seem very calm mm -hmm. in this process. And I, you know, I, I think I joked one day and said, when you've been through the 2008, 2009 financial crisis, when you've, yeah almost had your shut your company shut down when you have had to you know go and and deliver your fourth child on your way to get your product on the shelf at, oh at home. <laughs> you know the, you just sort of roll yeah, with yeah, it yeah, right yeah, and yeah, yeah. and you just and you learn that that it's important to think about those times and maybe you didn't think that it was all going to work out yeah. but then it did right? Maybe it turned out a little bit different way than you That's had thought. Right, yeah. And and so more importantly, I think even shows like this are ones where it helps people to know, and especially the people who are going through dark moments that are really challenging. Okay. If you're not, and you've never been through those times, some of the stuff that we talk about here or we talk about on my podcast don't make sense to people mm. until you've been through it. But the people that are going through really, really challenging times, that's the, that's where it's like misery is company is, as yeah, yeah. you know, the saying goes, it's it to be able to hear the stories that people had moments that were really dark yeah. when they didn't know how they were going to get through, but then this happened yeah, yeah. and then this happened that's what people need to know in order to know that they can go on. Exactly. So it's a, it's a really, really important piece of it. Yeah. I think challenges are everywhere. Uh, you know, a lot of people hide those challenges. They don't talk about it. Uh, it, it, it sort of, um, uh, they, they have a perception. It makes them look weak or something like that. But I think uh, challenges are what make us sort of, you know, go further. And that power of belief in ourselves is, is what sort of leads other people to come at the right moment. They show, they show up, the resources show up. If you just believe that you know this is gonna work, um, before I go further, like you know, I I really want to thank you because you you sent us a, a huge package of uh, of water and all all the goodies, and I have a nine year old son, uh, he just absolutely loved the water, uh, like uh -huh. for for <laughs> for an entire I think two weeks that's all he drank, like he he goes nobody else can drink it, I'm the only one gonna who's gonna drink it, so that, oh, that was I great, thank it. you so much, uh, um, of course. Yeah. And so now let's move on to your book, which is uh, sort of the theme, you know, Undaunted. What made you write it? And and um, I'm sure uh, like it is all about what we talked about already. But tell us what prompted that and what are some of the, um, you know, some of the key things that people can take away from that book? Yeah, I think the the main key thing. So it, it really is my journey and it's from starting uh, and I grew up in Arizona, uh, mm -hmm. did, had these dreams of being a writer. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even have a dream of being in tech until mm -hmm. I just got in it and I found what I was interested in. And, mm -hmm. and so actually making the moves to start somewhere, I think is a really, really important yeah, lesson yeah. in this book. One of my chapters is called build the plane, build the airplane as you're flying it. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I, I talk all the time that it's, you know, the the lessons I've learned in in not only 
my company, but in other other companies that I've worked for, is that you don't always have the roadmap. And and you spoke about you know the support that you get inside of your company. If you don't have people that are a little bit bendable, maybe yeah, they. Yeah. I used to think because this was my first startup that I had yeah. started. I used to think that I've got to go and hire lots of people from Coke and Pepsi to come into my company. Not having experience, they they joined the company, but then those people were not the right people because they mm. were used to following orders, mm. right? They were mm. used to mm. thinking that it this is the way you do it yeah, versus yeah, yeah. actually saying, could we do it this way? They'd say yeah. no. And yeah. I'd say, why? Yeah, and yeah. then they didn't have the answers because uh, they no one had gone through that process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you need people who are curious. You need yeah. people who are willing to fail. You need people who are excited and passionate about your product, mm -hmm. but also excited and passionate about you and believe yeah. that you are going to do this, but also are willing to test things along the way. And that those are the stories that I tell in the book too, not only my own experience, but also finding the right people, um, be recognizing that, you know, even if in our case, when, you know, we had a, one of the stories in the book is getting kicked out of Starbucks and mm -hmm. we were in Starbucks and, you know, almost 7,000 stores in, in the, across the U S and as we were, that was a very exciting day when we got in there. We were surpassing our goals in Starbucks, but when they got a new buyer and they started having strategic discussions internally at, at Starbucks, they decided they wanted to offer food mm. in their cases. They didn't have food prior to uh, us being in there. They had a couple of cookies, but they didn't have mm. any sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when I got the news that they were going to pull us out of the case, that was a bad day. Mm. I thought you can't do this. We've been meeting all of the expectations, but they had expectations for their business too. And so it's yeah. a story about learning. Don't put your all, all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. Things can mm -hmm. happen when people change strategies Absolutely. that are better for them. Absolutely. And, and also become aware of you can't stop. You yeah. need to figure out what else can I be doing? And that's when uh, we got an email about two weeks after the Starbucks situation from Amazon. Amazon mm -hmm. was just starting their grocery business and mm -hmm. they hadn't launched beverages online. And the buyer from Amazon said to me, you know, I buy your product every morning at Starbucks. Nice, nice. Now, I didn't know if I should share with him that we had nice. just been eliminated <laughs> from <laughs> Starbucks or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just said, oh, that's that's terrific. And I'm yeah. thinking, oh, what yeah. if he finds out? <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, I said, I have a lot of extra product that we mm -hmm. can ship out to you right now. Like this minute, I can yeah. ship it out to you. And he said, oh, that's great. I'll wire you the money right now. That's terrific nice, because nice. we really want to get this launch. Mm -hmm. So again, understanding that if you are open to other possibilities yeah. along the way, we didn't have online direct-to-consumer in our plan. Today, during yeah. the pandemic, that business tripled. Mm. For us, almost 50% of our yeah, yeah. business is direct to consumer. Yeah. And yeah. having that relationship with the consumer versus going through a store for 100% of your distribution is not only important for you to have that consumer relationship during normal times, but during a pandemic Absolutely. when Absolutely. things are out of control in terms of, you know, where this virus sits, if stores are closing down, um, the safest way to get products to consumers, et cetera. So lots of lessons in the book yeah, yeah. about Absolutely. that. That's great. That's great. Now, I, I, I know we are running out of time, but uh, this one question I have is, um, you know, uh, the, the other part, the other part of the title is doubters and uh, uh, doubt and doubters. And you also talk about fearless risk takers. Entrepreneurs are fearless risk takers. At the same time, you you also say you know you you have been through times where uh, things didn't look uh, as good, and uh, you know fear sets in, anxiety sets in. So these are two different dimensions. So how do you reconcile them? How do you 
you know, overcome these fears um, and then keep on taking these risks? Well, it, it's so th the name of the book is Undaunted Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. Mm. And I think there's there's always been this this idea out there about entrepreneurs that they are fearless risk takers, that they don't have doubts and then they'll just go and do whatever because yeah. they just, they know they'll be successful. Mm -hmm. And I've always shared with people that I, I actually think that most entrepreneurs actually do have doubts and they do have fears, mm -hmm. but the, the, the fun of going and trying the, uh, the adrenaline of going out into a world that hasn't been tackled before is consistent with what I've seen in so many entrepreneurs. It's not that they don't think that, that, you know, they're going to fail or there's mm -hmm. a tiny little bit of doubt sitting in, in their head, but instead it's figuring out what if it could actually happen? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, you know, think about Steve Jobs and how many people thought he was crazy yeah, when yeah, he yeah. was putting this computer together and sticking a little apple on it. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's just crazy, right? And and I just think like things thinking about those people and and knowing their stories and ones that I've been very fascinated with for so many years are the things that have allowed me to know I could. You know, I could go do it. And I think probably the most surprising thing for me, if you don't mind me say about my book that yeah, has yeah, been, course. I knew it would be great for beverage entrepreneurs or people in the food space, or maybe even female entrepreneurs, yeah, yeah. or maybe even, you know, mothers who wanted to go and launch a company. But the most fascinating thing for me about this book, for the feedback that I've gotten on the book is that there are so many executives that have hit C-suite who have read the book, who have said to me, I'm questioning why I haven't gone out and done my own thing. Nice. I've nice. made enough money. Mm -hmm. I've not, I'm not very challenged. I'm not learning along the way. Why can't I go and take a chance? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they come to their own conclusion about the fear that yeah. they have, the fear of failure for people. And mm -hmm. the higher you get in an organization when you've never really failed, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a big one, right? Yeah, yeah. Where you think to yourself, I don't want to look stupid. Yeah, Why yeah. would I want to go and do that? Yet the intrigue of it, the the excitement of, of doing something, in, in the case of Hint, doing something that actually betters people's health, where you feel that it's actually helping people to drink water and and get healthier. I mean, that's a powerful pull for me. Uh -huh. So I I wanted to be able to share that story with people and and also just the one last thing on that too my con the concern of even my publisher when this was first out there was that you know there it's a female is it going to be too focused on female entrepreneurism which of course is is a big topic yeah. worldwide but the number of men who have reached out to me touching on the topic that you talked about in the beginning about about not you know not having it all figured out and therefore they or maybe they've had failures in the past and they don't talk about those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's a it's a big conversation that owning your own hard times and your own challenges, it doesn't mean that you can't do something better going yeah, forward. In fact, yeah. those are the people that we all root for, yeah, right? Yeah, that yeah, have yeah. had challenges and failures and therefore they've learned from yeah, their yeah. own experience. So it, it's an exciting, you know, the book launched last October. It's still going very strong yeah, and yeah. Uh, very, very exciting. Thank you for having me on, too. No, thanks a lot. This has been an amazing yeah. conversation. Yeah. I mean, learning from uh, success stories like yourself and, and going behind the scenes is what uh, this show is all about. And I think, as you said, it, this is what inspires other people because uh, role models are the, uh, are the key thing you know which keep us going you know we we can look at um at these uh these stories and use them as templates for our own lives 
Absolutely. And I think it's important. And it, yeah, to your point, it's not just about business. It's about all this stuff goes hand in hand with yeah. how you think about your personal life and what you can do and yeah. waking up with saying yes to a yeah. lot of things versus actually saying, oh, I, I'm not qualified to do that. I yeah. don't think I could accomplish that. Instead, just go out and try. Yeah. And the, the, amount of appreciation you have for yourself and the growth that you have for, for yourself just by going and trying and seeing what you can accomplish is usually much better and a, a better feeling not only not for, really for you, but also for your, your family, your business and, and happier people because you're learning along the way. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, uh, now, before I let you go, can you tell us uh, if people want to reach out to you, how can they do that? Sure. All over social media platforms where we met actually yeah, on, yeah. on, uh, at Kara golden with mm -hmm. an I mm -hmm. and, uh, absolutely. I would love to hear from you. Hopefully you'll get a chance to order the book. Uh, it's available worldwide. It's also on audible. Uh, it'd be terrific to see, uh, to, and to hear more from people. Absolutely. We'll put those links in the show notes so that people can reach out easily. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks.